the belly of a whale? Who? Jonah. Jonah. Very good. And that is what we're going to talk about today. You know, some people thought we were building a rocket ship, a spaceship. No, we were building a whale. And a whale beyond what I ever could have imagined. Um, and this whale is supposed to help us learn about Jonah. Now, Jonah, he was a little naughty. Who's been naughty in here sometimes? Maybe not listen to our parents. Maybe we're sassy. And said, no, I don't want to clean my room. Maybe somebody in here had a tantrum. You had a tantrum, Josie? You did? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know what? Jonah had a tantrum, too. Okay? God told him, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. And Jonah was like, I don't want to go to Nineveh. Those people are crazy. They rejected you, God. They don't want to hear about you. And God said, no, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. And he didn't listen. And so... Jonah rejected what God said. Hey, is Jonah in there? And he ended up on a boat. And it started to storm. Kind of like last night. It was pretty scary, huh? You know, the rain was falling down. It was lightning. It was thunder. There was big booms, right? Did anybody get woken up? I know I did a couple times.
wash it. You gotta clean that off. <laughs> okay. You have a squid in your hair. I have. I have a squid. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Oh. You know what? This guy's name is Mr. Twinkle, and this is Mr. Whale, and they were my friends. They took good care of me, actually. I mean, look. So what did you do for three days? Oh, I was um. I played with Mr. Purple, uh -huh. and I talked to Mr. Whale. But you know who I talked to mainly? Who? I don't know if you want to touch that. Well, I was trying to get it away from here. I, <laughs> I talked to God. You did? I did. And you know, he was silent for a while. And I just like, <laughs> just afraid it's going to fall on me. He was, <laughs> he was silent for a while. <laughs> it's on my shoes. But like this, you know, he just wanted me to break him. And tell him it's good work. Uh huh. <laughs> and he wanted me to tell you all that he loves you very much. And he wants to have a great relationship with each one of you. And you know how you do that, right? How do you do that? How do you have a great relationship with God? Does anybody know? How do you build a relationship with God? That's a big question, right? I think sometimes as adults, we can't even answer that. Like to even tell our kids, well, you just have a relationship. You know, and it's such a bumper sticker answer, but how do we have a real relationship with God? How do you have a real relationship with anybody? How do I get to know if I wanted to get to know Becky, what do I need to do? I need to spend time with her, right? So I need to spend time with Becky, and I need to say, you know, Becky, how are you doing? And, you know, what are your favorite colors? You know, and God wants to know that about you. Like something as simple as maybe you like the color pink, that's like huge to God. He wants to know what your favorite colors are. He wants to know what you want to be when you grow up. Because God is on your side. And he would do anything for you and he wants to spend time with you. Because you're important. All of you. You know, there are a lot of people in the world and just because there's a lot of people doesn't mean that you're less important to him. It doesn't matter. Just like when you have brothers or sisters, like sometimes the older brother kind of doesn't get, you know, maybe as much <coughs> attention. You know, that doesn't mean that you're any less special than you were when you were little. You're just as important as maybe your little sister or your little brother. You're all loved. Because even if your mom and dad aren't giving you the attention, God loves you so much. And he thinks that you're so special. And he wants you to spend time with him. And he wants you to listen to him. And when he tells you to do something, he wants you to do it. And there's such a great blessing in that. You know, let me tell you a story. I was in Wendy's with my husband and my kids um, probably six months ago. And... I was so busy and so tired, and and God spoke to me. We were sitting there eating, and I was trying to get done eating because we had like 80 other million things to do, as a lot of us parents do. And, and God spoke to me, and he said, look at that man. And I was like, what man? And I look up, and there's a man who works at Wendy's, and he's crying. And he's so sad. And he goes, go over and talk to him. And I'm like, God, I don't want to go talk to him. Like, I'm tired. I have two kids, and I'm trying to shove food down their throats, and then we have, like, all these stores to go to, and we have this little time, and I have to get him home, and I have to get baths, and they have school tomorrow. And I don't have time, God. And he's like, get up and go talk to that man. And I'm like... Oh my God, he's going to think I'm crazy. Like, I can't go talk to this guy. He doesn't know who I am. Here's this crazy chicken Wendy's, and she's going to come and, and talk to me. And you know what? I was like, okay, God, whatever. So I grabbed my husband's cup, and I said, would you like more to drink? And at that point, my husband knew something was up. Because he's like, why don't you give me another drink? It's not even empty. Whoa. And so I got the cup, because I figured if this man thinks I'm a lunatic, and I feel crazy, then I'll just act like I'm going to get another drink and play it all cool, you know? I'm not crazy. So I go over there and I walk by his table and I go, sir, are you okay? And you know what? He said, no, I'm not okay. He said, I just had a panic attack. And I have, have 
so much anxiety and I just couldn't even work. And he's like crying. He doesn't think I'm crazy. He's sad. There are so many people that are sad and there's so many people that are broken and they need you to listen to God. And so I went up to him and I was talking to him and, and he's sharing his feelings with me. And you know, I just felt like I need to pray for him. So I said, can I pray for you? And he's like, yeah. So I wrapped my arms around him and I prayed for him and I told him how much he was loved and how much he was valued and how much God loved him. And then I walked over and got my husband another drink and sat back down like nothing happened. You know, sometimes we have to step out of our comfort, comfort zone and do things that we don't want to do because it's, we're doing what God called us to do. You know, for some of us that teach in the children's department, maybe that's not our cup of tea either. But you know what? God calls us to do so many things. You know, whether it's like me. Oh, yeah, like you. You're close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not that comfort. <laughs> but God calls us to do so many things. So sometimes we have to be, be obedient. And that includes with our parents. So maybe it sucks that we have to clean our room for the 80 millionth time. And we don't see a point because we're just going to make a mess in it in five minutes. But you know what? It, we do it because our parents ask us to do it. And it's the same with God. We do it because God asks us to do it. So next time when our moms and dads ask us to do something, instead of throwing a fit and maybe kicking a chair and throwing things down on the ground and getting sassy about it, you know, we just say yes ma'am or yes sir and just do it and get it done with, right? Because sometimes it's just easier to do something like that so you don't end up in trouble, which is kind of like Wanda, where she ended up in the belly of the whale, and that's pretty nasty. The of the and it's messy. <laughs> and I'm smelling. <laughs> so, that's our lesson. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we're going to have a special... Oh, yes, it's coming. Yeah, that's right. Matthew, wait one second, um, you can ask mm -hmm. yeah. What happened to Jonah? He ended up out of the whale. God, they, God had the whale spit him out, and then he ended up going um, to Nineveh and doing what God asked him to do. But he ended up in the whale. So, anything else, Matthew? Um, I got one question. How quick is how, how she got into it and how she? Well, I went on a three-hour tour with the Jacobsons on the boat, and I was disobedient to God, just like Jonah was, and I got tossed out of the boat. And then Mr. Whale decided to have a snap, and that's where I was. And he ain't wacky, Wanda. So you always.